So today we are talking about racism and racism today in America looks like the alt-right. So the title of the stream is why is racism bad? I don't think that most people can actually answer why is racism bad? They've got maybe like one or two things that they can say, like you shouldn't treat people poorly. And then when you say, well, why shouldn't you treat people poorly? They say, I don't know. Nobody can really answer why racism is bad, what you're supposed to do if you meet a racist, how do you argue against a racist and tell them that they're not supposed to be racist. And so we're going to talk mostly about the alt-right. If you are a right-winger, if you're a conservative, you are probably uh, told that you are alt-right on a consistent basis. Um, you are probably told you're alt-right when you're not. You you might not even know what the alt-right is. So we're going to start by talking about what the alt-right is. The alt-right was started by a guy uh, named Richard Spencer. This smug little guy right here is Richard Spencer. He did not like conservatives. He doesn't like conservatism. He believes that being right-wing is actually being a fascist, it's being a white nationalist, and what he believes that the actual conservative party isn't even actually conservative, that a real conservative would actually be so conservative, they would want to go so far back in time and conserve white nationalism. They would want to conserve being racist. They would want to conserve having a uh, I'm sorry. Give me just a second. They would want to conserve having uh, slaves, right? They would want to be that conservative to where most American conservatives, most right-wing conservatives, those are not real conservatives. Uh, somebody who's in the alt-right like Richard Spencer is a real conservative, okay? And he ended up writing these articles online for a newspaper that he worked for that he got fired from, I believe, pretty quickly. But he wrote this article about the alternative right, the, the, a, a new right for real conservatives, for young people who wanted something different than the than the stupid Tea Party stuff, right? That's that's what he's pretty much saying in his article is Tea Party stuff is pointless and people being a uh, real, you know, old person conservative, boomer conservative stuff is pointless, that real conservatives want to conserve their whiteness. They want to conserve their white culture. And so they so so he writes this paper uh or writes an article for this paper about this new alternative right called the alt right and he when he gets fired he ends up starting this he's sparking off this huge thing where everybody wants to be a part of this alt right and it blows up into this great big huge uh online community of people on things like 4chan. 4chan is a, is a place like Facebook or Twitter. It's another social media service, but they have absolutely no rules. They say, hey, every, you know, we believe in freedom of speech, so we're not going to block anything. You can say whatever you want. So, of course, the people who actually are kind of racist go to this place. And some of the people who aren't racist actually go to this place just to learn about different stuff just to talk to people they believe that maybe their speech is being hindered on twitter and they keep getting blocked on facebook and so they want to really talk on a place that has true freedom of speech so they go to 4chan to talk on there and they end up getting sucked in by all of these alt writers who have all of these different things and one of the things that they started is their own what they call uh their own identity Okay, they say they are identitarians. Um, they are not upset with the left over identity politics. No, alt writers have their own identity politics, and it's about being white, and it's about 
how white they are and how their white culture matters and how this melting pot that's being pushed into America is actually ruining white culture and it's taking away from white culture. So what they're trying to do is, uh, what, what the online stuff does is actually makes for these crazy memes, okay? So this green flag right here uh, under me, it's right here, I believe, no, sorry. I guess it's over here for you guys. But this green flag, that is actually a, um, it, it's the flag for the alt-right. And if you look at it in comparison to the Nazi flag, it's pretty similar. They both have the stripes and they end up matching up perfectly. Now, this flag is called the flag of Kekistan. Okay. A Kek is something that they made up. Kekistan is a place where everybody is, it was, it's a kind of how they make fun of leftists and leftist uh, identity politics. And so Kekistan is this place where everybody is being subjugated and everybody is being hurt and nobody is respected and everything is just unfair. And so they walk around all the time saying stuff like free Kekistan. Uh, Kekistan isn't a real place, but it's all about the memes for, uh, for the alt-right. Everything is about memeing. And when people say all the time, you'll, you'll hear people often say, the right memes better than the left. The left can't meme. Democrats can't meme. It's because alt-writers are the best at coming up with memes that catch. And they come up with these memes that most of us, most of us who are just moving along with our day and we hear different things and maybe as conservatives we don't like uh we don't like identity politics and so when they'll make up stuff that they know is going to catch the ear of an actual conservative and that natural conservative will share now and put out there and lots of white people will end up putting this stuff out there just because they think it's funny or because they believe in it but in reality it is what's called crypto fascism and so crypto fascism has a uh it, it says crypto fascism is the secret support for or admiration of fascism the term is used to imply that an individual or group keeps this support or admiration hidden to avoid political persecution or political suicide the common usage is crypto fascist one who practices this support so the way that an alt writer will be a crypto fascist is they will say things like, I'm not racist. I, I just care about white people. Why is caring about white people wrong? Is there anything wrong with that? And in reality, no, there's nothing wrong with caring about white people. But then they'll move it a little bit farther and a little bit farther. And they keep taking another step until eventually they're saying stuff like, we need to end all immigration, legal and illegal. We need to pay all of the black people and all of the Mexicans and everybody who's not white. We need to pay them to move to other countries. This is what an alt writer believes. And so this is called white nationalism. Most people think that nationalism is white nationalism. No, nationalism is something that's very close to patriotism, except Nationalism means that you actually care so much about your country and your people that it could be to the detriment of other countries. Or you care so much about your people that you would actually, um, that you end up caring more about your people and the people from your nation than you do about other nations. Now, something like the military, that is a national idea. The military is a nationalist organization not white nationalist but it is a nationalist idea everything in the military is nationalist everything in the government should be nationalist people asked trump one day they said hey trump are you a patriot he said i'm a nationalist newspapers went crazy cnn tickers were flying across the bottom what he says he's a nationalist can't be a nationalist that's that's against the rules that's against the rules for the left. You're not allowed to be a nationalist. So 
in reality, nationalist does not mean you're racist. Nationalist means that you are for your country so much that it could be to the detriment of others. So literally any immigration laws whatsoever are nationalist laws, not white nationalist laws. So now white nationalist means that you only care about the white people in your nation to the detriment of anybody who is not a white person in your nation. That's a white nationalist. So lots of people believe in nationalism and it's not racist. But believing in white nationalism, according to the alt-right, also isn't racist. Believing in white nationalism just means that you want a place for your people. The, if you go to China, they have all Chinese people. If you go to Korea, they have all Korean people. If you go to Africa, they have African people. If you go anywhere else in the world, if you go to Mexico, they got Mexican people. Why is it so wrong? that white people would want their own place. Why is it so crazy that white people would want a place of their own where they can call home? This is the idea of uh, the alt-right. This is what they put out there. Now they are racist, but they put out these little things like that to say, we're not really racist. We're not really racist. We just like white people. We just want to care about white people. Now, do they care about all white people? Who knows? What is a white person? You look about 100 years ago, Italian people weren't white. Jewish people weren't white. Even Russian people weren't white. I don't know if Russian people are white today. But Jews still are not white. So in crypto fascism, they put out all sorts of memery. They come up with all sorts of crazy stuff. So the word like Cuck, C-U-C-K. This is, uh, or a free space. Uh, sorry, uh, Kekistan obsession with George Soros talks about the Jews, uh, ironically, uh, rants against feminism, thanks Black, Black Lives Matter and Antifa, are, or sorry, thinks Black Lives Matter and Antifa are terrorist groups. Racial IQ differences. So look, I personally have gone down what has what is called the alt-right pipeline. The alt-right pipeline is where crypto fascism starts to seep in. You're a conservative, you're a liberal, you're a white guy, and you start to hear these things, and you're like, yeah, what's wrong with that? I want to hear more. Well, this doesn't sound so bad. You, I want to hear more. Then you start hearing more, and you're like, man, they're right. Everybody keeps calling everybody a racist. And therefore, these are sorry, everyone keeps calling everybody a racist, and I need to hear more of what, about what these guys are saying. These guys have it figured out. The, the issue is, is that the left plays right into crypto fascism. They play right into it. So crypto fascism, they're putting out or, or the alt-right, they're putting out all of these different memes, and they're putting out all of this different stuff that's being shared all over the place. And conservatives will share it. And then leftists will come and say, you're part of the alt-right. You're a fascist. You're a racist. You're a nationalist. You're a white nationalist. You're a part of the KKK. They will say all this stuff going off. Now, them demonizing you, a conservative, as an alt-righter makes you believe that maybe everybody's an alt-righter and nobody's an alt-righter, which is exactly what the alt-right wants you to do. They don't want to be labeled as this bad group of people. They want to be able to pull people in and they want to be able to do it slowly. So as much as they can do it as fast as they can, but on slow increments for you personally, you are going to get pulled in very slowly. And so this is called the alt-right pipeline. And I went down this pipeline thinking, well, what? It, there's these t-shirts that say, it's okay to be white. I think it's okay to be white. Then a school bans these shirts saying, these shirts do not reflect what our school is about. And I thought, what? Your school's not about it being okay to be a white person? This is crazy, right? This is called trolling. 
and alt writers are the best at trolling. They are the trolling kings. Nobody can troll like an alt writer. Okay. They put out shirts like this to start crap. The more leftists rage against the conservatives, the more the conservatives are pushed farther right. It's the game plan for the alt right. It, it is what it is. I fell for it. We all fall for it. We all get moved that much closer to the alt right sometimes. And then we move ourselves back. We're like, hey, hey wait a second. You almost got me. <laughs> Caught me slipping. Not this time, buddy. So they put out all sorts of crazy memes. And they'll have crazy stuff that you think is innocent and okay. And it turns out it's not. It's not okay. It is all very alt-right. And if you go to 4chan and look at them, they will have their game plan outlined easily. They will have their game plan outlined right there where it says, hey, look, first we're going to put out some innocent memes that look nice and, and, and don't seem to have any issues. And then all the white people and all of the conservatives are going to start posting this stuff and sharing it. And then all of the leftists the crazy people are going to lose their minds and they're going to act crazy and it's going to make the people who are on the right hate the leftists that much more and then when they go watch videos and it's of us saying yeah see we told you those leftists are crazy they're actually racist against white people that's all it is they're just racist against white people you need to come on over here with us we'll tell you a whole lot more we're not racist we just like white people come on over here we'll tell you all about white people so they put out memes like Pepe the Frog. Pepe the Frog started out as a very innocent meme. It was. It was a, it was a kid's book where it was teaching young kids, I believe, you know, easy things like potty training. And so the frog, this sounds perverted, it sounds crazy, but it's a children's book. It's very innocent. And the frog would go to the bathroom, and when he would use the toilet, he would say things like, feels good, man. And the alt writers found this book and it became just meme gold. Okay. This was as good as it gets for them. They could not believe they happened upon something so great. The great thing about the frog is that he doesn't have a nose. You know who has big noses? Jews. We're not going to get to them yet, but the alt-right hates the Jews. Alt-writers hate the Jews, man. Jews are no bueno, okay? So because the frog has no nose, he is now a symbol of Kekistan. Let's see. Yeah. He is a symbol of Kekistan now. And uh, all sorts of different things came out like this. It is a white national uh, logo. It is something that, uh, that everybody uses. You put it on your leg. You say, hey, buddy, look. And he looks at it. Now you get to punch him in the arm. That's the rules. That's the rules of the game. Or you hit a three and you run down the court doing this. Now, white nationalists have a very simple hand gesture that is commonly used everywhere. And now anytime somebody does something like this so that they can punch you in the arm or they do this running down the court, now all of the media is gonna start freaking out saying they're racist, they're white nationalists. Till racism and national, white nationalism gets turned into a joke. It is just something funny that pisses off leftist media and pisses off CNN and MSNBC and CBS and BuzzFeed and Vox, the, it, 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 it turns into a big joke. And for most of us, racism is not a big joke. Most of us actually do care about racism. Most of us aren't actually racist. And it is sad to see them start to win this game. Every time a leftist loses their mind and they freak out, the rest of us get to sit here like, man, 
I, we're all just sitting here calmly talking normally. Why are they freaking out? They're going crazy. It's because the leftists actually decipher this stuff very well. They were able to pick it all out and figure it out a lot faster than the rest of us were. As a conservative, I can admit this all went right over my head. I had racist iconography right in front of my face all the time, and I didn't have a clue. I would look at stuff with frogs on it and had no clue that everything with a frog was now racist. And neither did Trump. Trump was posting stuff with Pepe the frog, who is uh, from that cartoon. Uh, he would post stuff with Pepe the frog as well. And he had no idea that he was posting something that was a an alt-right trope used to pull the rest of us in. And I did the same. We all did it. And so now we have fallen for the memes. And if uh, and the alt writers call this the meme war, they believe that they will pull more people to their side through memes alone than anything else. I feel like I skipped a step, but we're going to go ahead and look at some alt-right iconography. So this right here, um, right there, that is the alt-right logo. And it is, some people say it is three guys who are hooded. Um, it's like the, the KKK hoods. Um, some people say that it's actually the, um, the swastika mixed up into a different logo. They want to be very uh, friendly looking. This is a huge part of the alt-right. They are propaganda experts, okay? They are very good at this stuff. And so all of the different neo-Nazi and white nationalist iconography has all been mixed up and turned into all sorts of different things to become very friendly and look normal to a lot of us so that we can get pulled in. In reality... The main goal of the alt-right is to have an ethnostate. Now, an ethnostate is a sovereign state of which citizenship is restricted to members of a particular radical, or sorry, racial or ethnic group. And that is the main goal of the alt-right. They want everybody who is not white to just leave the country. Um, that is their main goal. That is what they're all about. And so at the heart of the alt-right, it is a white nationalist organization. Now you can ask yourself, is white nationalism racist? This is a fair question. If we just say, hey, look, all we care about is white culture. We're not really trying to kick out, or sorry, we don't hate the black people. Actually, we love the black people. We love the black people and we love the fact that they have their own continent. It's called Africa. And Africa has all black people on it. And we love the Chinese people. And Chinese it, 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 uh, there's a Chinese place called China where it's all Chinese people. And if you go to the Middle East, it is all Middle Easterners. Where can you go where it's all white people? Where can you go where white culture is upheld? Where white culture is held in a glass box to stay uh, you know, nice and clean and supreme and unfeathered. There is nowhere. All of the white places have lots of immigration. They all are very rich. They have very smart people there. And they 
are getting invaded by people of all other races. So you have to ask yourself, is this racist? And if not, then who cares? What's wrong with it? What's wrong with wanting to uphold white culture? And maybe you've never thought about this, okay? But the real question is, what is white culture? What is Western culture? Like you can come up with some little simple things like being a Christian or watching sports. I don't know. But nothing that you come up with isn't going to be very common in all of these other countries. Now, it is probably the white man who spread it to all these other countries. That's fair. But Christianity believes that Jesus is the last prophet and the son of God and that Jews are the chosen people and Jews are not allowed in the ethno state, according to the alt writers, according to white nationalists. They hate the Jews. The Jews are evil. They're taking over the world. There's a conspiracy. They're all together working to be at the highest points of every important position in the world so that they can take over. It's called the Jewish question. And is it true that there are Jewish people at very high points all over the country? Yes, it is very true. Are they very powerful people in the government, in business, in corporations, on Wall Street? Yes, Jews are very powerful people all over the place, everywhere you go. There is going to be a Jewish person there towards the top, always. But it's not a conspiracy. They're not all working together to do this. They're not like, that's where it gets a little crazy because you'd have to think, dang, dude, they've been working on this for hundreds of years just – putting their people into all of these different positions so that the Jews can take over the world, man. That's crazy. But if you're a Christian, you can't hate the Jews. I'm sorry. It's backwards. You cannot be a Christian and hate God's chosen people. You cannot hate the Jews while being a Christian. The first part of that being Christ, Christian, while Christ is a Jew. That doesn't make any sense. You can't hate the Jews and be a Christian. That's like, that's like Muslims hating Middle Easterners. <laughs> it's like being like, hey, uh, I don't care if you're a black Muslim or a Middle Eastern Muslim, uh, you hate Middle Easterners, you hate Muhammad. Sorry. Doesn't make any sense. So while while the alt right is trying to keep white culture clean keeping white men and white women from having babies with other people they want to keep the genes clean it's not clear what the genes are if jews are not included then russians probably aren't included if russians aren't included then italians probably aren't included if italians aren't included then i don't know how you could include irish people but if irish people aren't included then there literally is no such thing as being white i mean irish people are like the whitest freaking people out there so there is no such thing as being white if Irish people are not white. So the entire idea of white nationalism may not be racist, but it's dumb. There is no such thing as white culture. You, they are fighting to uphold something that doesn't even exist. Like white culture is vanilla. 
It is what you mix everything else in with to spice it up. White culture is letting everybody else come in and then knocking off their stuff and turning it into a Taco Bell, turning it into a KFC, turning it into a Pizza Hut, turning it into a Panda Express. That is white culture. White culture is a knockoff of everybody else. White culture is the blandest thing ever and needs a lot of color added to it to be interesting whatsoever. The reason you don't want to be racist is because white people are not special at all. Now, is it true that sometimes people of different colors have lower IQs? Yes, this is true. Does it matter? Not really. Actually, when you look at it, Jews and Asians have the highest average IQ of anybody. If you want to be an anything supremacist, you should be an Asian supremacist. Asians knock white people out the park when it comes to test scores and IQ scores and graduating college and uh, staying married, staying off of welfare. So the way that the alt writers treat black people is the way that Asian people should treat white people. That's why being racist doesn't make sense for a white person. It's not that it's mean. It's not that you just shouldn't do it. It's that the inkling that you are special when you come in third place in everything you consider special is so dumb. 